Here is a summary of the derivation procedure to determine the transfer function of a sample data system. So we need to assign first a variable to each sampler entry and the associated sampler output. So if we have a sampler, if the entry is A in the continuous S domain, then the associated output is the A star for us. Then we need to make a list of the input and output nodes for the digital closed loop control system. To do this, let's assume a simple example. So the input nodes for this digital closed loop control system is the system input and every sample output. And the output nodes are the main output of the system and each sampler input. So the output nodes here is A of S and C of S. And the input nodes are R of S and A star of S. Then we need to try to express each output, if possible, in terms of every input. Finally, we need to take the star shape transform of these equations and then solve by any convenient method. Let's see some other examples. Consider the digital control system with a model shown here. Your digital controller deals with digital information. If your input is analog, then it has to be sampled at some point. So analog to digital converter is needed. So the analog to digital converter can be replaced by a simple idea sampler or impulse sampler. Since our plant model is in the continuous domain and the output of the controller is digital, then that digital information has to be converted to analog via a digital to analog converter. We have already mentioned in previous videos about the types of digital to analog converters. Here we are using the zero order fold, which can be represented as follows. So the block diagram, B, is exactly a representation of the one at A. Following the procedure discussed previously, then we can write the input of the sampler as E in S and the sampler output as E star of S. For convenience as well, the digital controller, T, the Z domain, can be expressed as D star in S. So the input nodes for this block diagram is RS and E star in S. And the outputs are ES and CS. And remember, we need to express each output, if possible, in terms of the inputs. So from block diagram B, we can write
So E, well, this is one of our outputs. And our second output is C, or this. We can also write C and S equals to G and S, D star and S, D star and S. C of S is also our output. Our inputs are RS and also E star S. In this case, we have satisfied the first four steps. Now the last step is to star the equations and use a convenient method to solve for the relation between the output and the input. So if we star the first equation, we get Moving this term to the left-hand side and taking E star and S as a common factor, we get And if we consider this is our second equation, Starting the second equation leads to so substituting the star of s here we get. and substituting the relation between the z domain and the s domain, we can get the transfer function. So here we have a pulse transfer function obtained since the input can be factored out easily. In this case, we can put the, the input under the output. And this is our pulse transfer function. Let's consider the following digital control closed loop system. Following the derivation procedure discussed, here we have two samplers, so we need first to assign the associated variables. So if we consider E1 and S as the sampler input, then the associated output is E1 star and S. And for sample number two, if we assume E2 and S is our input, then the output is E2 star and S. So we need to assign now the input nodes. Now the input nodes are the main input for the system, which is RS, and the output of each sampler. Where are the output nodes are 
e1, e2, and c of s. Now we need to express each output in terms of the inputs if possible. So we can write We can also write E2 in S. We still have one output C in S to express in terms of the input nodes. Now the outputs are E1 as agreed before, E2 and CS. And the inputs are RS. Two, one, and two. Now we have expressed the output in terms of the inputs. Now we can star the equations and solve as convenient. So starting equation one, we get. Starting equation two, Starting now, question three, we get if we substitute E one and this equation, then the resultant E two is substituted in the following equation, then we can write the response as Or the equivalent z domain plus transfer function can be written as
and the pulse transfer function can be written as such. As another example, consider the following digital control closed loop system. We have the input RS, uh, which is subtracted from the output to obtain E1, the continuous domain, before the sampler. The associated sampler output is E1 star. E1 star is the input for the first continuous block, G1, in the S domain. And also we have another summing junction, and we have another block, G2. If you notice, we can tell straight away that no transfer function that may be derived for this system. The reason for this is E1, which is a function of the input R, S, is fed directly to the block G2 without being sampled. And as we discussed before, if the input is fed to an analog block without being sampled, then we won't be able to factor out the input. As far as the derivation procedure for the pulse transfer function is concerned, we can find that the inputs are RS and also E1 star. And the outputs are C1 and Cs. If you recall, we need to express the output nodes in terms of the input nodes. So we can start with one of the output nodes, E1. E1 in S is the output, and so is CS. Preferably, we would like to express the output in terms of inputs, if possible. So we can further find the equation of CS in terms of inputs. So C in the S domain can be written as As far as the derivation procedure is concerned, one of our partial objectives is to find the output nodes in terms of the input nodes. So, in order to find C in the S domain in terms of purely input nodes, then if we perhaps substitute E1 of S in the second equation, we get a relation between C, S in terms of purely input nodes. So C, S becomes So making the E1S substitution, we get the output in relation to the input.
So C S can be expressed as Substituting now CS back in the first equation, we get the following. This leads to If you remember, the ultimate objective is to find C star over the input, output star over the input star, because this can lead to the pulse transfer function. So here we have the output in terms of the desired input. However, we have this extra term here. This will prevent us from finding the unique relation as desired. Even if you star E1, in order to find E1 star at first, and you substitute that finding in E1, we still we won't be able to find the pulse transfer function. Even though we manage to find the output equations, in terms of inputs, we still we were not able to find the pulse transfer function. So without going further, we can conclude no pulse transfer function can be found.